Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. I'm uh, Michael Aranander, and uh, I will be talking about Hitchhiker's Guide to Blender CG Animation. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is my first time in Blender Conference, and I'm so happy. It's amazing to be here and meet all the people that love Blender. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so first of all, why did I name this uh, talk this? Yeah. Well, uh, to know that, you first need to know like who, who I am. Uh, so I will first of all tell a little bit, a short, a brief story about myself here. So I've been uh, using Blender uh, like as a hobby for eight years roughly and I've always had a passion for like a huge passion for Warhammer 40,000 I don't know if anyone knows what that is but uh, yeah this basically means that whenever I did something in Blender uh, I, I just wanted to do anything that I thought was fun to do uh, so therefore I made these Warhammer figures it's like small tiny figures and gave them life basically uh, using Blender so uh, then uh, if we now f f uh, f fast forward seven years, then uh, yeah, some stuff I released looks like this. Uh, those are my figures now that uh, have become 3D models and uh, animated. So uh, I'm yeah, super happy to see this and be able to share like, my passion for something in this way. Um, and, uh, but then the thing is that uh, I've always had this as a hobby. Uh, except for recently, uh, where, um, yeah, uh, but uh, and anyway, uh, that means that I didn't have much time to work on this very often, but still, it's like I had basically kind of like a maximum, I calculated this, I had a maximum of eight hours per week to uh, work on Blender stuff, and uh, I still wanted to like produce very often or be able to at least like every year finish some big project and uh, make something cool. And I also felt the, like, uh, I wanted to make something better for every iteration or for every time I uploaded something. And that meant that I had to, like, uh, try and reach any limit I could find. So, um, yeah, other than uh, just uh, yeah, making my videos, or, like, yeah, I'm actually a full-time student other than being this Taumich. Uh, so that's what that's what like eats up a lot of my time, uh, but it's also like many other things. Like uh, I actually teach Blender each, uh, even for an association in my university, uh, KTH University, by the way, um, and uh, I, oh yeah, also for the Swedish Museum of Technology in Stockholm. So um, yeah, I'm very excited to uh, be doing a lot of things with Blender. So yeah, now that you know that uh, basically I had a very like tight time constraint. Um, then uh, you can kind of understand perhaps that I had to like try and find these shortcuts. So I had to like uh, basically find some uh, some yeah fast route to the target, like uh, yeah jump onto some uh, <laughs> some spaceship in, and uh, fly into space. Uh, yeah, so here I am all alone. Uh, yeah, but uh, I have a dream. I want to make uh, these animations. So uh, what I did was, um, I started off by, um, yeah, I mean, let's say that I wanted to make this thing here that we see. Um, it requires a lot, it has lots of details and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it requires many different workflows and it even has uh, cloth simulation. It's like many things. Uh, now, uh, since, uh, yeah, during these many years that I've been using Blender, I've been like slowly learning how to use all of like the tricks needed to like, uh, yeah, the slow way basically, to learn one thing at a time. Uh, but uh, if I would like, with my current experience for example, try and maybe figure out how long would it take to create this, then uh, perhaps uh, it would look like this if I was a bit optimistic. Uh, eight hours, okay. So how, how would that go? Uh, four hours with assets, hmm, is that possible? Um, well, I mean, if you, you really do it as fast as you can and try to hide as many details as possible, then maybe you can do both the character and the gun there and the, the lightning and all of that within eight hours. 
and this would then be one week worth for me. Uh, but uh, as it turns out, it's good to uh, plan ahead. So I, yeah, I would uh, at least like double the time probably, Ar somewhere around doubling it to uh, two weeks worth of um, work. Although uh, what the actual time to make this would take is like about yeah 30 yeah it's like one month so uh, <laughs> it uh, takes a lot longer than it might uh, like yeah than than it uh, might appear as uh, even for someone who's uh, very fast at making things uh, but yeah it's also a matter of how well you want it to be like and how many times in the future you want to reuse this uh, and since this character. It's like something I wanted to be able to reuse many times. Uh, I tried to make it as good as possible, kind of. Now, um, there are uh, many tricks that I learned during my years uh, working with projects. I kind of uploaded, like, every, every year I uploaded one big, uh, like, video at least. And uh, that meant that I had many uh, tries to like try and find out uh, which method works very well. How can I organize myself? Or is there any workflow that uh, I should be using in order to achieve my end goal as fast as possible? And uh, yeah, I I basically found a lot of different things that you can use to cut cut down the time it takes to create anything. Uh, but uh, I chose three things. That I, th that I think are especially good to use and that I want to highlight. Uh, especially now, they, these are also like uh, very, uh, very good for uh, Blender 2.8 especially. Uh, but they are basically, okay, so how to work smart. Uh, if you can keep things easy to iterate, then uh, you can very easily both adjust something and create uh, new things, even, uh, that are similar to each other. Uh, another thing is linked to scale, and I will go into that, and availability. Yeah, but let's start with this iteration process. So, uh, something I started using a lot was that I tried, I, I realized that I had to try and cut down on, like, uh, cut away time that would be repetitive otherwise, or redundant. So I tried this to look up a lot of methods to work non-destructively. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so in the end I decided that, okay, my pipeline or my workflow should basically be that uh, if I haven't created something like uh, the thing I want uh, before, then I should uh, at keep it as non-destructive for as long as possible up until uh, some point where I figure that, okay, now it's uh, probably not worth it to keep it non-destructive. Uh, yeah, and that's also partly with like uh, the modifier limitations and such. Uh, but uh, at that point, I save this last uh, version uh, and store it in some way that it's easy for me to know that, okay, if I need this again, then I know where to find it. Um, and then what I do is uh, that I just finish the thing I actually was gonna do uh, make out of this, uh, and in that way I can produce uh, like various types of buildings pretty fast, or various types of other things. And one example that I want to show is I made uh, some kind of pipe library, um, or yeah, I, I actually have many pipe libraries, but this is one of them uh, that um, has like many straight lines, and it was supposed to be like some rusty old. Uh, uh, scene or assets for some rusty things, and uh, then I what I did was I had like uh, a long pipe with uh, many like segments and made even f many versions of this pipe, and uh, I didn't need a pipe that was that long, so instead I just cut uh, cut off with booleans uh, the pipe's height, uh, and then just changed the uh, like which part of the pipes that are going to be uh, cut off. And uh, so I like produced uh, like 15 of them, I think it is, in uh, a matter of seconds. Um, and then I did like, yeah, I basically tried to iterate things. So I did like some railing and uh, tried to destroy it a little here and there for variation. 
Uh, and yeah, it, it went very fast to make things this way. And I also kept the old files. So in case I want a larger library or want something similar, then I know exactly where this file is saved. And uh, you can see in the outline here that uh, in the end, in the bottom, there is a creation uh, uh, thing that, uh, yeah, a creation folder that is unticked. And in there, I have like all the things I did for creating each of these assets very rapidly. So uh, by having it easy to iterate, then uh, you can get like var var variation and create things very quickly. I will actually come back to this uh, later, but. Um, Let's for now go to link to scale. Maybe my favorite uh, uh, topic, uh, and we have actually heard a, l a lot about the linking in various other presentations here. So uh, that must mean that it's very important, right? Uh, so uh, what do I want mean with link to scale? Uh, yeah, well, you can see on this uh, picture here that uh, basically I can use for example, different furniture or different sub assets that I have created from like a resource library or uh, yeah, some that I have maybe made in the past. And then I can combine these to create some larger asset. And then uh, by using linking, it means that I'm just using references to these resources. So it's uh, both very easy to uh, like replace things, it's easy to uh, like manage uh, many, large amounts of things, and you can also like make different iterations also pretty quickly with this. And you also don't even need to have finished all your assets this way. You can create them or make proxies quickly, uh, and then finish them later. So, but then after you have finished one building, you can go further and uh, make like the multiple ones that you then combine into a big city. So in this way, you're kind of scaling everything up. You're going from the base resources and then just building on top of that uh, with, like, uh, with this library hierarchy uh, up until you reach the point that you feel this is what I want or this is exactly what I need. Kind of. uh, and that goes very fast then to make just because of the iterations and the ability to, uh, uh, yeah, to link everything in and replace them so easily. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we can kind of see a little bit how the library structure is uh, looking right here. And because uh, there is this big uh, folder uh, that is called library, if you look at the top of the outliner, kind of uh, second to the top. And uh, what I basically use this big folder for is just to import it, for example, to some uh, file where I want to use these pieces. Uh, and then you can start and play around with it and place them wherever you want. Uh, so it's kind of like to easily like package it and send it over. Uh, and uh, what something I did with this then was to, uh, I don't know if it's too dark, but uh, I made some kind of uh, sci-fi scene that is um, like, uh, there, I think it has like 200 uh, of these pipes and floors and railings and everything. And the file size is still like very, small, it's like almost an empty blend file. So I noticed that also by using the linking, you also save a lot of storage room. And also you can then have like uh, much, you can have like, it goes so fast to save, for example, that you can have autosave on like uh, much, much more often. Uh, and this, uh, yeah, this helps with speed and in many ways also performance. Since if you hide some stuff, then, uh, yeah, then it will basically not be there. Uh, now, yeah, that's file size there. Now, here comes an example that uh, was, uh, yeah, that turns out uh, very crazy. But uh, I started with like building some walls here and um, wanted to like see, okay, let's make some kind of uh, rock, uh, you know, super crazy city with uh, like almost Gothic architecture. Uh, so, yeah, I iterated these walls in some ways to create uh, these kinds of things. Everything is linked in. Uh, then um, I wanted to build a city with these. So, yeah, here you can see very uh, it went very quickly to make these. Just because I, uh, yeah, I'm not showing the exactly middle step there, but I combined these buildings into like a 
build in complex, and then I just dropped many of them onto the landscape. Uh, and yeah, you can see that it became like massive. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, it didn't even lag on, uh, on even my uh, small computer that I'm presenting this on. So um, even though it had like, uh, I think it was five million polygons at this point, uh, it started to lag if I looked at everything though. But uh, yeah, but it's because it has to render stuff. So, but as soon as you don't look at it or hide stuff, then it's like, per yeah, no performance issue. But here comes the question then, can we do more? And uh, I was like, hmm, this seems powerful. Can I do something really crazy with this? Uh, and I did. I recruited an army. So here is a soldier that I made for my movies. Uh, and uh, yeah, I recruited, uh, I think it's 200 of them, 300 of them here. And actually each of them, I looked it up and it was like in total 60,000 polygons, I think, per soldier. And each of them has like eye strands, uh, like hair, hair particles. And also I actually uh, like modeled my hand uh, just because I didn't have a hand model. And I was like, yeah, why not try and model it um, just for experience. Uh, and then I, all of them basically have my left hand. Then. So I think there's like 400 left hands there. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the, I still found that, okay, it's lagging a little bit or uh, if I move around my camera and such. All of these soldiers are also rigged and uh, have uh, like cycles, walk cycles and such. Uh, but uh, as soon as I pressed render, then uh, it went super fast still to render. It was like almost um, no difference when I scaled things up. So I actually used this, uh, I don't know if it, yeah, you can see it. Okay, I used this in one of my latest like uh, releases, uh, uh, trailers for one of my series. And uh, uh, then I added like 2,000 soldiers. So, and the, the actual thing that took the longest to render was not the soldiers, it was the volumetrics that caused so many small particles. Uh, but then, yeah, I, I tried using like the AI denoisers and all of that. But uh, yeah, it was the noise that uh, was the most annoying in this scene, not the actual amount of soldiers. Uh, also, to create this, I couldn't display all of them and move them around because that would lag way too much. Uh, instead, what I did was, since every like uh, block of soldiers was linked from a collection, uh, I just replaced it with, or like I moved out the soldiers from the collection and added a cube with the exact same size. And then I just, uh, in this file, then, managed, like, where should I walk? Well, they should walk over here. And I knew the speed also because I, like uh, the, the speed of their footsteps and such. Uh, so I just added these or moved these blocks, and then I switched it back to soldiers. And then I pressed render, and I got like a full animation with these marching, uh, yeah, 2,000 soldiers. Um, but uh, that was also not the uh, limit. I wanted to see like, well, how far can I reach? So I tried uh, adding a lot more. Uh, you can also see I added some of my like big robots um, to this scene, and uh, yeah, I think I, it is at about ten or twenty thousand soldiers now. I think it is, yeah, three billion trees is what we are at, and I was like, oh, why? Well, it still works to render just fine, um, but that was not the limit either. Uh, I tried adding one hundred thousand soldiers, and yeah, here is how it looks. And with the city also, and I even added some cloud system that I was playing around with. And yeah, so um, there you see, 200,000 of my left hands. Yeah, uh, very mighty look indeed. Okay. Now, um, how long did it take to render this then? Yeah, you can kind of see the, st the statistics here. I have actually 2,070 uh, uh, graphic cards. Um, but uh, I rendered this in Ultra HD, so if you want HD, and for example have one of these graphic cards, then it would take like half an hour, which is uh, still, it's like a bit long, but it's, for being like 42 billion polygons, this uh, I think is pretty amazing still. You can also see that the memory is like above uh, 5 gigabytes for uh, the VRAM then as I used. Uh, but I was also using denoiser, so uh, one can like scale down the tile sizes in cycles. Uh, yeah, Eve uh, would not uh, be able to handle this very easily. 
But uh, with cycles, you can still render pretty impressive scenes then uh, using these methods if everything is linked. Uh, it's mostly like variety and textures that uh, seem to scale up uh, the like memory. Since due to everything being linked, if I would d duplicate this and make like the tw twice as many soldiers, uh, it, it seemed like it would have been only going up by half a gigabyte RAM. So uh, I, yeah, I could probably increase it even further. So yeah, if you want to create huge armies, then uh, this is a good way. Or if you want to create uh, buildings, like big cities. Uh, yeah, uh, but then, let's see then a little how uh, uh, this ki these kinds of two things, uh, these two things, like the iteration part and the actual linking could uh, lower time a little from going from this uh, one month uh, monstrosity to uh, just maybe a week's worth of uh, time. So, uh, oh yeah, before, f first we need to go through availability a little. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I decided to add this uh, point as well, because uh, I realized that uh, both the iteration part and the linking part required like uh, a, very, a well established structure uh, for you to be able to quickly like uh, import the things that you know that you need. So what I did was, uh, yeah, I tried to distribute all the files I have in uh, folders that would uh, make so that it's kind of like the same length to go from the top down to the resources that you want. Uh, so like a balanced uh, binary tree, if uh, you want more technical speech for that. But uh, yeah, you can kind of see how I did it here. With, yeah, I re realized civilizations and creature and decorations and all that uh, would work very well. So here is actually how long it kind of took me to make my latest trailer. And this is not from entire pure scratch, exactly. Uh, and the reason is because uh, I was using library. Uh, you can see that it says library value here. Uh, so because of I had these libraries with also uh, easily modifiable pieces and also linkable pieces, I was able to still like go from like, yeah, I want to make a trailer, a new trailer for my uh, next episode. Uh, and then from that point and two months forward, then I had like uh, f 50 seconds of video uh, completed. Um, which means that I had nine scenes that I had to build and uh, r like animate everything and such. And you can see that the asset creation time is very small uh, because of that. Uh, and most of the work that I spent was like trying to build the library further, actually, because uh, there was like cycles and such. I wanted to have uh, these animations and poses uh, saved for later use. So anything I made here is like uh, open for me to use in the future as well. And by thinking this way, then I realized that uh, like everything I do will add up to future stuff. It's like just as you develop yourself as an artist, you also build your own bank of tools, kind of, simultaneously even. So um, let's look also now one year back, or like one year before this one, uh, at my older project. So yeah, I had made a long, like, uh, five minute long uh, animation. That uh, yeah, I, I, I feel it's like one of my favorite ones. Uh, and that one took so long, it's like eight months. Uh, for me, it was like, oh, I think by the end I almost felt a headache, but I loved it. <laughs> Not the headache, but this animation. Uh, but um, there I only had like a hundred hours of library value. And it was not very well distributed in like save files. So I didn't really know where to look for stuff that I had done in the past. Uh, so it was like I spent a lot of time making new things and I even updated files uh, that sometimes uh, had like a duplicate somewhere else, but they were not linked. So then it was like I had to either try and import things or try and uh, yeah, move things over or try and make, uh, remake it quickly. And uh, that, that was a big time sink. So I realized that, okay, I'm, after this project I must establish some kind of structure here. Uh, and that's what I did, and that's what worked very well. 
and that's why I also want to present it to you and how much like I value uh, the, that I started to organize my work. Um, yeah, because most of the time here, like even walk cycles or places where I could have used walk cycles, I made by hand just because I felt that if I would try and make a walk cycle, then I didn't really have, know exactly how to do it. So it felt like I would spend equally much time learning how to do it as it would take making it manually. Uh, and yeah, it was probably not the best choice then to do it manually, uh, now in afterthought. But uh, yeah, it's still like a learning experience. And uh, yeah, uh, and rendering and such also. You can, if you want to cut that, uh, then there are so many farms, uh, especially like community ones. Like this frame here, I'm pretty sure this was rendered on a community farm, like sheep it, I think. Uh, so, um, yeah, there are people, I don't know, maybe someone here even that has even helped me render one of these. So, yeah, and thanks for that <laughs> in, in that case. Um, but, yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, these are then basically the three things I want you to carry with you uh, after you leave this presentation room. But uh, if you keep it easy to iterate, it goes fast to make new things and similar things. Oh yeah, I was gonna come back to something actually uh, regarding that, and it was the, that uh, the character that you saw turning his head, the robot guy. Uh, he he was actually made with the same base that the soldier was made with. So I actually made the soldier like I just uh, changed the armor pieces a little, so it went much faster than working from scratch. But yeah, easy to iterate, then link to scale as you've seen examples, good examples of and uh, then keeping things easily available. Those are my three main things. So yeah, thank you for uh, listening. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions or anything, uh, I'm called Taumich on like all social medias and uh, I'm happy to respond to anything. So. It's like, yeah, yeah, just write to me. You can come and ask me, talk to me whenever, if you have any question. Yes, thank you.